I looked back for some reason. The car I was just in is slowly rolling backwards. Uh, hi, this is gonna get really interesting really quickly. In fact, I think I quite literally need to buckle up for this and I think you need to buckle up for this as well. I'm literally gonna stay like this for the rest of the video. So I feel like in the short amount of time that I've actually been driving, I have way too many uh, crazy story times from being behind the wheel already. It's a little concerning. I have not done anything illegal, okay? Also, some of it's from driver's ed, so I was still learning. Anyway, why am I making this video? I think that you guys can learn from my mistakes while also being extremely entertained in the process because I have some tea to spill. Like one of these stories, I literally forgot to put my car in park on a slope. But I'm saving that story for last. In fact, I think I'm only going to cover two major ones. And the first one occurred during driver's ed. Let's start from the beginning. I was absolutely spoiled by my first three in-car driving lessons. So like you're in the driver's seat and there's an instructor in the passenger seat so you can traumatize someone else instead of your own parents. So uh, that's great. But like I said, I was spoiled with my like first three in-car lessons because this woman became my best friend. The in-car lessons were like two hours each, which is an insanely long time to be seated right next to someone you've never met. And it's super awkward when you drive in silence. Oh my gosh, this woman is like social goals for me. We literally chatted like there was no tomorrow. It was amazing. She was so sweet. She was a single mom with a daughter. I wish, I wish I could like meet her again and tell her I got my license. Anyway, props to that woman. It provided a lot of contrast for my in-car instructor for my next few lessons though because he had zero trust in me and when someone's teaching you how to drive, some trust, even if it doesn't make sense, is necessary. Trust is necessary. Here's some background for this specific incident. Incident. So this instructor was in the passenger seat, but in the back seat there was a teenage guy So that's a little bit more pressure because I had never done a driving lesson with another kid in the car And I got no notice that that was gonna happen So it kind of raised the stress level just a little bit at least and then there was also another instructor in the back for some reason Mind you the instructor in the front with me and the instructor in the back are fairly older the one in the back his vibe screamed like happy old man and the one in the front with me um he he was just kind of stressed out i don't know what was going on i don't know if it just seemed like i would be a bad driver or something i don't know but yeah things were off to a rocky start because as we were leaving the parking lot of the driving place he has a break this is important later he has a break on the passenger side of the car so he can basically break the car without me pressing the brake, which gets really confusing. And I didn't know this and I figured it out because while we were leaving the parking lot, like he was slamming that thing. I was braking coming up to stop signs, but I guess he didn't think I was braking fast enough because he was like slamming the thing on his side. And it's a really weird feeling when the car is braking and you're not doing anything. Some communication there might've been a little bit helpful. Anyway, the sun has also set now and it's nighttime, which doesn't help. And once it gets really dark, we start hitting a faster road okay the speed limit is pretty high and there is a stoplight in front of us now i'm a good driver i very much take driving advice from other people and a piece of driving advice i'd received from someone else is that if the light goes yellow and you're not sure if you're gonna make it don't slam the brakes don't slam the brakes and cause everyone in the car to jerk forward especially if there's people in the back seat well i had a full car of people were coming up at a fast speed to this light and what does it do? It turns yellow. In my mind, I thought, I am so glad I've thought about this beforehand. I am going to keep driving through and not slam the brakes because we're relatively close to the light. So I keep driving and maybe absentmindedly, I do actually speed up. But I literally think we were going like 45, 50 miles an hour. As I'm continuing into this yellow light, the instructor looks at me and he goes, what are you doing? What are you doing? And builds up the tension and it's getting stressful because we're about to hit this intersection and the light is yellow. And now I'm confused because I thought I was doing the right thing. And this man says, brake, brake, brake and proceeds to slam the brake on his side 
side of the car. And what do you think happens? We skid into the intersection. Nobody moves. There are cars on both sides of this intersection that we're waiting to go. Light turns green for them. No one moves. Everyone is staring at this car that has like driver's education plastered on the side of both doors and no one knows what to do. I'm not even joking when I think nothing happened for a good 10 seconds before we proceeded to back up and traffic continued. I was traumatized. I was holding back tears. Actually, I wanted to get out of the car, go into fetal position and cry for like five minutes and then possibly consider getting back in the car. But obviously, I could not do that. This is where I do give props to the instructor because he very calmly explained to me why he was yelling break and whatever and, and why he was concerned. And he was also comforting me about like how that happens all the time. What's weird is I feel like that made us closer for the rest of the drive, even though it was like super traumatizing and I just wanted to disappear. Like there was a weird level of like, we're in this together after that. So into what? together though trying to not die anyway i feel horrible because there is a kid my age in the back seat that just experienced this and probably thought he was going to die and was probably shaking for the rest of the time behind the wheel. We still had like 45 minutes left after this had happened. If I were that kid in the back, I would be praying for my life the entire rest of the time that I was in the front seat. And I want to note that I am a good driver. I did that because I didn't want to slam the brakes with that many people in the car. So that was quite literally one of the most traumatizing things of my life though. I usually only get like put on the verge of tears from emotional stuff. That was very much just wanting to cry because this situation just felt like a nightmare. It did not even feel real. I never thought that I would be in a situation where my driving instructor was yelling at me. Like do I have to repeat myself? Do I have to bring up my demonstration from earlier for you guys to understand how this man was yelling at me? You know what? I'm gonna play it again right now. I rest my case. Case in point. Okay. I think we fully broke that story down. Yeah, what should you learn from that? Gain practice with timing yellow lights. You will not regret it. When you're practicing driving or you just want to get better at whether to stop or not at yellow lights, whenever you approach a green light, just at different distances pretend the light has gone yellow and continue driving through that light to see how long it takes you to get there. I would argue that timing a yellow light is very much muscle memory. Ultimately, you just need practice. My heart still beats. It still picks up a few beats whenever I go past the yellow light just from that experience. And this specific stoplight it was relatively close to my house so I do still pass it and that memory will forever be engraved in my brain I think God is sparing me though because I haven't yet received a yellow light at that same stoplight so I'm thankful for that it's also important to note that no one in the car got hurt and I only learned from that experience that drive arguably did go well that experience could have spared me from an even worse yellow light experience so I'm a believer of blessings in disguise even if it has a large disguise my hand is sweating okay my back finally hurts oh that feels so nice we're gonna get slightly more comfortable now that's better by the way filming this in the car was a willing choice I feel like I missed pieces of the intro welcome to this new era of video making by the way love it that you're here number two I'm filming this in the car because it's stories about the car I was originally going to film this underneath a car but I can't get comfortable and that's a little overkill but that is a fun idea for me to film like story times in relevant places so yeah that's cool okay I'm gonna tell you a second and last story for this video which is is um, the one I've been hinting at. We're gonna jump right in and I'm gonna start from the beginning. Only when I'm so I had been learning to drive in my dad's car, which is newer, therefore shifting it between drive, neutral, reverse, park, it's all buttons, okay? It's all electronic buttons versus the car I would be primarily driving when I got my license has a stick shift on it. So whenever I drove my dad's car to practice driving and we were parking to get out and finish up our driving session, I would simply leave the car in drive, which is what you have it in to go forward if you're not familiar with the car whatsoever, and I would just turn off the car and it would automatically switch from drive to park because it's making up for my mistake of not putting the car in park. Now, if you don't have a car that automatically puts it in park for you when you're being an idiot, I mean, I just didn't know any better. But if you forget to and get out of the car without it in park, it will roll forward or backward after you turn the car off because the car is not locked into place. 
So this brings us to my first day of driving and this car actually where you manually with the stick change it f between drive, park, reverse. So first day ever using my license, I'm driving to school. First day ever, okay? I pray for safety every single time I go driving. Not because I think I'm a bad driver, because driving is actually really dangerous and just like why not? Why wouldn't you? I value my life. I'd rather not die in a car crash. I want to have a more dramatic and influential death than that but that's besides the point so yeah first day ever driving by myself with my license to school what could go wrong a lot of things but primarily the fact that I'm not in the habit of putting my car in park before I get out so I pull up into the school parking lot and I pray again that I will be kept safe all the way into the parking lot. I'll come back to that later. But important note about this parking lot, it is slanted. It very much has a slant to it. And I conveniently park on the top of the slant. And there are plenty of cars scattered down the rest of the parking lot towards the bottom of the slant. So like I said, I, I pull into a parking place at the top of the slant. What do I do but turn the car off while it's in drive, grab my backpack, and get <clears throat> out? Little did I know the most stressful five minutes of my life would follow. I start walking towards the school building. And once I'm like 15 seconds away, I look back at my car. I don't know why. I don't know what prompted me to look back. I had no reason to. The school was straight ahead of me and I still had a ways to walk. Nevertheless, I looked back for some reason and I noticed the car I was just in is slowly rolling backwards. It is slowly rolling backwards. I thought this only happened in movies. I can barely believe it's happening but without even thinking I sprint over back to my car. The car wasn't rolling back with an insane velocity. Nevertheless, it was picking up velocity. And if you don't believe me that this was insanely horrifying, I do not swear. I do not say the no no bad bad words. However, I did let out a low tier, no, no, bad, bad word. As I physically opened the door of my rolling backward car, got in and hit the brake in 0.5 seconds. I actually felt like a superhero or Spider-Man or something. I did that so fast. So at this point, my car is half out of the parking space. It started rolling slow, but I did brake before it really picked up speed. And here's where I only made things a hundred times worse. I have my foot on the brake, but I still don't know what the issue is. I don't know what to do in order to be able to take my foot off the brake and have the car stay in place. So I click the power button for the car, but there's a delay. Okay, there is a delay. So I click it again, which only turned on the electricity of the car. Does that make sense? There is a lag with the engine start button, and in clicking it a certain amount of times, I only turned on the electricity and not the engine itself. Now, would I hear the engine physically start? Yes. I missed all the cues that, even though it seemed like it, the engine was not on. So me shifting the little gear to park wasn't doing anything. I still was rolling backward. So as I'm like testing to see if putting my car in park is working, I'm letting off the brake and I'm slowly ch -ch 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 jerking down the hill slightly and I'm kind of fully out of my parking space now, blocking the area for cars to come in, which is extremely inconvenient because there are many people who are trying to get in this parking lot. I'm like waving them to go by. I don't know what's happening. Like my car's in park and it's still rolling backward because the engine wasn't on when I moved it into park. I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. I think that my brakes are broken. I can't let off the brake or get out of the car to explain it to the people waiting because my car will roll backward into all the other cars at the bottom of the slant. I was insanely overwhelmed until a certain car turned into the parking lot, which was in fact a friend of mine and her dad. They come in and are confused by, you know, my car. They don't know it's me, but they turn to like drive around me and, and park. And as she and her dad are getting out of the car, I, with my foot still on the brake, open the door and say like, can you help me? And it did not sound like, can you help me? I'm pretty sure my voice was cracking. Probably sounded like I was about to cry. Oh my gosh. Her dad is so nice. My literal savior in this situation. He says, Oh, sure, sure, sure. What do you need? He comes over right away. And I'm still stressed because I'm like completely rolled out of my parking spot, like blocking other cars. So there's, it's high stress. I try to show him what's happening as, as I'm like taking the foot off my brake and putting it back on. I'm getting closer and closer to the cars behind me. It's insanely stressful. And then I was like, can you get in the driver's seat maybe? Because obviously I'm of no help. 
I don't know what's going on. So we make a quick switch. I jump out and he jumps in the car really fast so we don't roll back a ton farther. And he notices right away, oh, the electricity's on, the engine isn't on. So he just presses start engine, puts the car in drive, pulls it forward into the parking space and parks it. Boom. Though it seems so simple, I would have never figured that out. I thought the car engine was on and it would respond to my gear shifting commands. I just, I can't even explain how much I owe to my friend's dad for that. Especially right now, I feel like I just owe him money. Oh my gosh, anyway, I do profusely thank him. I literally probably said thank you so much 15 times in the span of a few sentences. So, uh, that's that. The way I coped with this trauma was pulling up my emergency park brake every single time I parked for the next week or month. Like I put my car into park and pulled up the emergency brake every single time I parked. And I also parked at the bottom of the hill every single time. Ironically though, later I figured out that students aren't even allowed to park there for the duration of class. Like it's only for drop off. That part is actually VIP parking for teachers. So uh, I accidentally was parking in the teacher VIP slanted parking area for the first like semester of school until someone was like, you can't park there. So I don't even park in that parking lot anymore. But oh my gosh, first day driving with my license by myself, horribly traumatic. Although back to me, literally randomly praying that I would be kept safe all the way into the parking lot. It is so easy to look at that like, well, that prayer wasn't answered. Are you kidding? Are you joking? It was. If I was not weirdly prompted to look back, I would come out out of the school building at the end of the day and find my car crashed into someone else's at the end of the parking lot. It was picking up speed down that hill. It very well would have continued all the way down and hit someone else's car. First day with my license and it would be like the worst day ever. Also that the person I knew, her dad was there at the literal perfect time in order to help me. And uh, there's a truck right there and I actually think someone's spying on me. Maybe I'm not supposed to be in this parking lot right now. I thought it was public. Uh. I guess we'll find out. Anyway, well, that that's literally it. I avoided disaster in all of these stories. Despite the trauma of it all, I was spared from even greater trauma and actual car accidents. So I'm just grateful for that. Driving is super dangerous and mistakes happen. You have to be careful. But uh, guys, always put your car in park. People make mistakes, it's okay. But I hope that these things don't have to happen to you and that you can just truly take in my stories and learn from them as if they were your own. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you also for your support. I love you guys so much. This stuff is so much fun for me. Yeah, that's literally it. Let me know if you enjoyed the story time kind of thing and uh, subscribe to see more stuff from me. Wear a seatbelt. Goodbye. Also, last week, someone literally started backing their car up into me, like into my body. I literally would have gotten run over if I didn't get out of the way. <laughs>